Welcome to this office mix for higher physics ODU unit on motion graphs. What are we looking at today? We're looking at how the motion of an object can be represented by a graph. We're looking at the three types of motion graph and how to interpret these graphs, what information can we get from them and how to draw other graphs from a graph, for example, an acceleration time graph from a velocity time graph. Uh, graphs are not new to high physics. You will have come across these graphs at National 5 too, whether it's a speed time graph or a velocity time graph. I'm going to start with some recap. Um, this is about speed time graphs, but could equally apply to velocity time graphs. You should already know the basic shapes. If we've got a constant speed, we have a graph like that. If we've got something accelerating, then we could have a graph like that. That would be a constant acceleration because it's a straight line. If it's decelerating, then we could have a graph like that. That again is a constant acceleration or a constant negative acceleration. There are three types of graph we're going to look at. Displacement time graph, velocity time graphs, and acceleration time graphs. So here's a displacement time graph. This graph here is showing that the displacement S is not changing over time. So that means that the object isn't moving. It's still at that certain displacement from the start. So that means its velocity time graph is zero and its acceleration time graph is also zero. Let's look at the next option, constant velocity. So. If there's a constant velocity, velocity is the rate of change of displacement. So that means that the displacement time graph is a diagonal line through the origin. We really should have a zero on our graphs and we should have units as well. So our velocity time graph is constant. Remember the slope of the Displacement time graph gives you the velocity time graph. So the slope is the same, the gradient, so it's a constant velocity. The acceleration time graph, well, if it's a constant velocity, there's no acceleration. So our graph looks like that one. I'm going to add on the units too. So let's look at the next option, a positive acceleration that's constant. We'll come back to the displacement one in a minute. Let's look at the velocity and the acceleration ones first. So constant acceleration, a line straight across the graph. Looking at the middle graph there, well, if there's a constant acceleration, we've got a straight line through the origin from zero to whatever value we happen to have. Let's look at the displacement one. Well, if the object is accelerating, as it is, it's getting faster, so it's going to cover more distance, great displacement at the end. So that is why it's curving up. What's happening this time? Well, this time it's a negative acceleration. <coughs> so you can see the acceleration is negative on the graph on the right. A negative acceleration means that the slope on the velocity time graph is negative. Because the object is slowing down, the change in displacement at the end is less, so the graph is flattening out horizontal on the displacement time graph. It's 
getting a large change in displacement at the beginning there and then it's flattening out at the end the green section and when it gets to zero of course there's no movement so we get the end so if we look at velocity time graphs we already know from national 5 that the area underneath the graph is equal to the displacement we can read the velocity from the graph and we can calculate the acceleration from the gradient what we're really doing there is we're doing our a equals v minus u over t which is the same as the gradient if we look at the displacement time graph we can read the displacement from the graph we can work out the velocity from the gradient because the velocity is equal to the displacement divided by the time the rate of change of displacement let's have a little look here so here is um, our graphs so we're going to look at the corresponding ones for displacement velocity and acceleration so let's start off with the displacement time graph that describes a journey so we start at zero after three seconds we have a displacement of 10 meters the object then doesn't move the displacement stays the same for another seven meters the object then goes back to the start and it takes two seconds to go back those 10 meters so you might think of that maybe it's a model car it's moving three seconds forward 10 meters away then it's staying there for seven seconds then it's moving for two seconds back to the start So from this, we can work out the velocity. So the velocity is the displacement divided by the time. So in the first section, what is the displacement divided by the time? Well, it's 10 divided by three, which is 3.33 meters per second. In the second middle section there, there is no displacement. So there's no velocity. In the last bit there there is a negative displacement in the two seconds so we get minus five meters per second so we can draw the graph from there and that is what we end up with so we've got an initial velocity forwards for three seconds we've got it stationary then we've got velocity backwards for two seconds Here's a velocity time graph. Now we're going to draw the acceleration time graph. How do we do that? Well, we do that the same way. We divide up the sections. So in the first three seconds, we work out the acceleration, V minus U over T. In the next seven seconds, we work out the acceleration. There is none. In the last section, we work out the acceleration. We get minus six we draw our graph plus four for three seconds zero and then we get minus six so we get a graph that looks like that one now we've got to work out the displacement time graph the displacement remember is the area underneath the graph so we work out our area underneath half times the base times the height, base times height for the rectangular section, half base times height for the bit at the end. Then we can have a sketch. We don't have to, we only have to sketch this. This was the hardest part of the graph to draw, I would say. <coughs> the point is the shape. The ones you'll ask will, in the most case, be the acceleration and velocity or velocity from the displacement graph. So what do you need to know at the end 
Well, you need to be able to draw an acceleration time graph from a velocity time graph. So take that slope, work out the acceleration v minus u over t for that section. Then do the next section and the next section and plot your graph. Secondly, you need to be able to draw a velocity time graph from a displacement time graph. So velocity is s divided by t. So take your data, work out the velocity in different sections, plot your graph. Thirdly, you have to be able to identify graphs that describe the same motion. So if you've got an acceleration one, what's the corresponding matching velocity one? What's the matching displacement one? Try and look at the clues. Remember, acceleration comes from the gradient of the velocity graph. Velocity comes from the gradient of the displacement graph or the slope.